So, let us start this session with a question. Are you a sea person or are you a mountain person? I am a sea person for sure. And I love walking on the beaches, drawing or writing on the sand. But be it sea or mountains, do you know that the sand found in the beaches or the rocks that make a mountain, what are they made of? Well, they're both made up of minerals. Minerals are one of the most important naturally occurring resources. So, welcome to the first segment of the chapter, Mineral and Power Resources. Tell me something, when you look at a cream biscuit, what do you see? You see a layer of cream sandwiched between two biscuits, right? But when biscuits are baked, a lot of ingredients go inside making the biscuits. There is flour, milk, sugar, sometimes eggs, some flavoring, coloring, agents, cream, and, and more. But when you look at the biscuit, do you see these ingredients separately? Definitely not. Just like a biscuit, there are a number of things inside the layer of the earth that you cannot see. The rocks on the surface of the earth have several minerals mixed in them. These minerals are scattered throughout the earth's rocky crust. Now there is a place called Dhanbad in the eastern part of our country. You will be amazed to see that the large areas in this place are black and dusty. Can you take a guess why would that be? Well, this is because of the coal mines in the area. Trucks carrying the mineral coal travel to and fro every day in this area. And just like the coal, the salt in your food and the graphite in your pencil, they are also minerals as well. Let's learn a little more about these minerals. Now, a mineral is a naturally occurring substance that has a definite chemical composition. Minerals are not evenly distributed over space. They are concentrated in a particular area or are found in rock formations. And there are some other minerals that are found in areas which are not easily accessible such as the Arctic Ocean Bed or Antarctica. Now, as I said before, minerals are natural occurring substances and they are formed in different types of geological environments under varying conditions, which basically are responsible for the traits that these minerals exhibit. They are created by natural processes without any human interference and they can be identified on the basis of their physical properties such as color, density, hardness and the chemical property of solubility. Now, if the Earth's surface is drilled, it will break into rocks. A rock is, a, is an aggregate, you could say, of one or more minerals without a definite composition of the constituent minerals. These rocks from which minerals are mined are known as ores. Now, although more than 2,800 types of minerals have been identified till date, only about 100 are considered ore minerals. Let us look at some type of minerals based on their composition and properties. Now, there are over 3,000 different minerals in this world that have been identified and are based on their composition. They have been classified into two main classes of metallic and non-metallic minerals. And metallic minerals are further classified as ferrous and non-ferrous minerals. Let us learn the properties of these classes. Metallic minerals, of course, contain metals in their raw forms, hence they get their name. Now, metals are hard substances, which are good conductors of heat and electricity, and they are lustrous. That means they have an innate shine. Iron ore, bauxite, manganese ore are some examples of this. And like I said a while back, metallic minerals may be ferrous or non-ferrous. As the names clearly indicate, ferrous minerals contain iron in them, for example, iron ore, manganese and chromites. On the other hand, a non-ferrous mineral does not contain iron 
but might contain other metals such as gold, silver, copper or lead. Moving on to other major to another major class which is the non-metallic minerals these do not contain metals at all. Limestone, mica and gypsum are examples of non-metallic minerals. Mineral fuels like coal and petroleum are also non-metallic minerals. As you already know, minerals need to be extracted from ores and this can be done by one of the three ways which are mining, drilling and quarrying. Now, uh, the process of extracting minerals from rocks buried under the earth's surface is called mining. Minerals that are available in the upper layers at shallow depths are obtained by removing the surface layer and this is known as open cast mining. To reach the mineral deposits that are lying at great depths, deep bores called shafts have to be dug and this is called shaft mining. In this segment, we exclusively looked at power resources and we learnt that power or energy is of great importance for our daily activities. We need energy in various industries and this is available to us in the form of conventional and non-conventional resources. Under conventional resources, we learnt about the uses of firewood and fossil fuels like coal, petroleum and natural gas. And we discuss that since these resources are exhaustible and their production takes millions of years, we need to use them frugally. So then we looked at non-conventional and cleaner options such as hydropower, biogas, solar and wind energy, nuclear power, tidal power and geothermal power. It is now time for me to say goodbye and we shall meet on the other side for another very interesting chapter to come. See you soon and take care. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.